Does whatever a spider can Spins a web any size Catches thieves just like flies Look out, here comes the Spider-Man Who am I? I'm Spider-Man Whoa! This is Sci-Fi History with Roy Ivy And we're going to be taking a look at Spider-Man No Way Home. Join me, won't you? <laughs> Roy here with Sci-Fi History. And we're going to be taking a look at... Spider-Man No Way Home, which delivers an enthusiastic five stars, unreserved, a guaranteed hit. Spider-Man No Way Home takes us back home to the essence of Stan Lee's Spider-Man. Let's take a look at the franchise that has developed over time. We go first to the comic books where Stan Lee created the incredible, amazing Spider-Man. Not like the DC heroes of yore, but characters that had faults, that had frailties, that they must overcome. And Peter was as frail as they came. One of Stan Lee's main points was the hero came from within, not the outside. The hero was Peter Parker. Spider-Man was only the wrapping. Comic books could not contain the amazing Spider-Man. He had to escape. But Marvel had trouble translating some of their characters to TV and movies. DC had a much easier time of it. Marvel Comics dominated the comic book scene. But as far as adaptations to TV and movies, DC had the lead. With early successes such as Superman and Batman. Marvel seemed to be lagging behind. Sure, they licensed their properties to studios, but not having a true tie with them, they were often substandard fare and turned into TV movies of the week with really awful adaptions of Thor, Daredevil, Nick Fury, and many others that performed below standard. But at least they had the Hulk, which was heavily changed to be effective on TV. But the movies were nowhere to be seen. Marvel seemed to be tripping over themselves and unable to get one of their properties up off the ground. But it was advantageous to Marvel Comics at the time because they could license out their properties. And even though many of those properties never made it to the big screen, Marvel still got paid for the rights and the rights reverted to them after a certain amount of time. But alas, finally, a property came together and a project came together with the amazing Spider-Man. And we found our true Spider-Man in Tobey Maguire, who many feel defined the definitive on-screen character of Spider-Man and Peter Parker, the first Toby Maguire film featured William Defoe as the Green Goblin. The second movie featured Dr. Octopus, each bigger movies than the one before. And then came Spider-Man 3 and had a trio of villains, Sandman, Venom, and incredibly enough, Peter Parker. Yes, Peter Parker served as a villain in some ways as he went dark, having been tainted by the mysterious Venom. This movie is particularly memorable for the evil Peter dance, which we all remember. Enough of that. Many people were excited to see Venom on screen. He never really did that much for me. I never understood it. Of course, I remember the black suit coming out of 
the secret wars of the comics. And the origin of Venom was heavily changed. Many people reacted uh, negatively to the evil Peter and the evil Peter dance, which became so infamous. A fourth movie was tanked because of it. And Sony decided to reboot the franchise with the amazing Spider-Man, which did reasonably well with Andrew Garfield. It wasn't to the second Amazing Spider-Man. Tony was disappointed with the subpar performance of the movie. I didn't realize how much I missed Andrew Garfield until I saw this movie, Spider-Man No Way Home. I knew I missed Tobey Maguire, but Andrew Garfield? No. But this movie handles the nod to the amazing Spider-Man quite well. And uh, best wishes to Andrew Garfield and whatever you might do in the future. And now this brings us full circle to the Tom Holland Spider-Man. The combination of both the Tobey Maguire and the Andrew Garfield Spider-Man in the one. Much younger, though. And just an incredible performance by Tom Holland as the new Spider-Man. And what better way to get to know the essence of former Spider-Man and the current Spider-Man is to revisit the villains of those Tom Raimi days, of those Andrew Garfield days. Yes, we get to see those villains yet again. So, get yourself out to a theater and see Spider-Man No Way Home. Money well spent, and you will enjoy it. Make sure that you see it in the largest screen possible. I saw it in uh, beautiful IMAX, and I thought it was amazing. I can't recommend this movie enough. Spider-Man gets a five-star review. Go out and see it. I'm going to see it again. Thank you for joining me on Sci-Fi History and a little look at the past of Spider-Man and hopefully the future. Will he be in the MCU? I sure hope so. But we will see. And we'll see these amazing adventures. Thank you for joining me on Sci-Fi History. Changing times and time. I'll see you here next time at 9 o'clock on Friday. When the new episodes drop. See you real soon. Bye-bye. True believers, get yourself to a theater and see Spider-Man No Way Home. It's an exciting movie, and it was lots of fun. I wonder if the Matrix exists in the Spider-Man multiverse. Does it? Does Matrix Resurrections work in the Spider-Man universe? Who knows?